obviously, thanks for coming. Um, an exciting day, but uh, as hopefully some of the people that were around today, hopefully sometimes anticlimactic, because you do your best work, okay, through the last three weeks, and then on this day, everything's pretty much hopefully set. You have a few surprises here and there. Didn't have any really today, which is, for us, a good thing. In the way we do our business in, in the north or in, in the state of Ohio, a lot of things probably are pretty much done, you know, well, well in advance to today. But uh, you still have some of that anxiety about all the things that are going on, and you never really know until the last minute. So it is an exciting day. Um, I think we're most excited about, you know, the, the three-week process that we had to really seal what it is that we had to do. And it started off with our, with our local, not just local, but the state of Ohio. So as all in all, a mix of great, great group of guys. We signed 23 guys today. 11 on offense, 11 on defense, and one kicker. We signed 10 from the state of Ohio, four from what we would call the state of Cincinnati, which is within that 50-mile uh, within radius. Um, I think uh, there's actually 17 guys, which we would call our 300-mile radius, so that, that extension of what we would still want to say some version of our, of, our home, of our home. I think there's nine states represented. So we, we have a few, of two guys from Georgia, one from Florida, just, just a variety of different things, Michigan, Indiana, Pennsylvania. So there's, there's a variety of the things that, uh, that we were looking for and, and went after. Um, but I think probably one of the, two of the biggest things for me is when people ask, what did you think about the, you know, about the class? Again, you will really know within about a year and a half. And that's the reality behind the whole thing. There's a lot of really, really good things in the looks on paper. The thing that I think I'm most excited about is, not, first thing being, a lot of guys from really, really good football programs. And I'm not just saying the state of Ohio, but when you look at guys that come from really good programs, not the program that maybe won the state this year, but the reality is really good programs. Those guys are the ones that have had to have some commitment level. They've had to have some selfless sacrifice for the program. They've had those expectations held upon them because of where they went to school and the programs that they, they were in. So that permeates when they come into our program. We know those kind of guys will fit the culture that which we want to be able to do. The standards we set on, the expectations we set on, the things we expect them to be able to do on the field, as well as in the classroom. So those guys coming will be a great addition because that's what they're used to. Um, I think the second thing is then we're looking for winners. And you get those guys that come from winning programs, winning teams. And that doesn't, a program isn't always the one that won the state that year. But if you look at our guys, I think we've got four guys. Maybe they come from state championship football teams. Maybe not just this year, but last year or from two years ago. But have been on a team where Obviously, they've won a state title. They've played in some really, really big football games. There's some guys that didn't win a state title but have played in regional championship games and those kinds of things. When they're winners, when they come from those programs, those teams that have won like that, it's, it's, kind of, it's an expectation for them. They don't like to lose. And that was one of those things when we recruited them, we talked about. You know, kind of, we want guys who don't accept losing, don't like to lose by any means of what they do. So those guys that come from those teams that won state titles, that went to the regional finals, they have that distaste for losing. And you want to be able to bring those guys into your programs. Not that every single one of them are going to be that. Not every guy comes from a great program. We understand that. Not every guy comes from a state championship team. But when you can get the core, the nucleus, the crux of your team to have come from those kinds of things, there's a lot of things that they bring other than the things that you guys can all see when they pop on the video. You can see their height, their weight, their speed, the things that they do on the football field. But it's the things off the football field that they can provide for our football program that I think go far beyond that and allows, gives them the opportunity to play early because you are going to ask who do you expect to be able to play next year and the reality is we don't know we expect them all to come in and play the guys that have come from those programs the guys that have been in the winning systems they got a lot better chance because guys from those programs that come in here they, they're going to be able to handle the academic structure the, the, the type of workouts the expectations that we have so that they can transition in to be able to play the game of football a lot quicker and a lot easier um, so those things add up more so than just the height the weight the different things that you see on the field so, again, the, probably the last thing, when we talked about this recruiting process, we had about three weeks, two and a half weeks, to really go hit the, hit the ground running. And we talked to these kids, you know, we said there's three things that we wanted to make sure we were looking for to separate um, in everything that we're looking for in recruiting. The number one thing is we're looking for guys with the passion and the love for the game of football. Okay, and you can ask them, but the reality is you've got to do some homework. You've got to ask the people in the school. You've got to ask some different people, do they really love the game of football? Do they just like it because they're really good at it? Or deep down inside, do they love the game of football? They love everything about the game of football because it's 90% work. Do they love the weight room? Do they love the study of the film? Do they love all those little things that come with it? And if they do, then those are the guys we're looking for. Number two, are they winners? 
Okay? And that doesn't mean they won every game. But the reality is winners have a distaste for losing. Winners come in all different shapes and sizes. Do they despise losing? If they're in a program that wins, obviously that's an expectation. That's what they're used to. But really, deep down inside, are they one of those guys that, I mean, really, it, it, it kind of hangs over their head for a couple days. We want those guys that are winners. We want those guys that compete. I don't care. Looking at other sports, do they play other sports? Do they compete in those kinds of things? Those guys are the winners. Those are the guys that come into your program and, and, and add value more so even than just on the football field to start with. And I think those are things that you, gotta, you don't just get off of film. You don't just get off of one visit to the school. I think those are things that you truly, truly got to dig deep down inside. And the third thing is, do, do guys have plans? Do they have dreams and goals and then have ability to put a plan in place so that they can work towards it? And if they've got those three things, we obviously, it's a lot easier to figure out all the other things that you can see on tape and the combine things. Those are the three things, the intangible things that we want to look for, that we know deep down inside, if we can get guys with those three intangible things, that uh, they will fit really well inside our program at whatever position, um, but they'll buy into the culture and believe in the culture and the things that we want to do. So we hope that's what we think is really exciting about it. I think we got a great mix of those guys, those guys that got a passion for the game, a love for the game, that are winners, and really, truly deep down inside have a plan. Because we told them exactly what it is that we expect and exactly what it is that we wanted to do, and we weren't going to shy away from that and making sure that they knew when they walked in these doors that they knew what to expect when they came in. So I think that's, for our first class, that's the encouraging thing. The guys that sit in these seats now, they're the ones that, you know what, they didn't really know what to expect. They didn't choose us. We chose them. These guys are the first class that come in that are going to choose us and believe in, in knowing what, what, uh, what it is that we're selling and ready to walk in the door and know what those expectations are going to be like. So if we now we can open up any questions. How many of these guys did you start cold on and how many of you had contact with you see before you know what, I would say at least three-fourths of them who started cold on. There's a few guys that obviously were already in the boat. There are a few guys that were already committed. But there, there are some that were really cold. And there's, a, there's a big defensive lineman that for the first time we really had some communication with in this past week. And, uh, you know, you have to build a relationship and do some things really fast and really quick. Now, the great thing about bringing in some other guys from other programs and new coaches, um, they've had some of those relationships with those kids. They've known them. And they've already had that ability to walk themselves in the door, but then the ability for us to be able to bring them, get them onto campus, to show them, tell them, let them see what it is that we believe in and, and what our expectations are um, for them to actually buy what we're, you know, buy into our program. So there, there's a few, probably only a few that we knew before, and a lot more that uh, in the last two weeks, even one in the past week, that um, we had to go build a quick relationship with. I, mean, I don't know how much better. Again, we'll have a lot better start. We'll have a lot better um, collection of guys that we're going to go after and have a ranking system and, and build better relationships. But the, the toughest thing I think you'd say is we, we started off, we probably only had seven guys, even when we started off on the road. So we had seven guys. So I would be in the eighth guy. There was no chance for us to double up, to go try to sit in a home and spend a lot of time maybe because you had so much work to try to do, to try to get to everybody, to get a good feel for who they are and what they're about. Because it's easy to pop on the tape and to do some evaluation. You know, we had those two weeks after the bowl game or Coach Freeman and Coach Phillips and some of those guys that were already here to pop on those tapes, to watch the things, to get a feel for those things. But really to, go, to get into the school, to be able to talk to some people that, you know, don't have a preconceived, don't know exactly what to take, are going to give you the true insight to be able to get into their home and to see how they react and respond around others. I think that's when you get to know a lot of get to know them a lot better. So that's where a lot of our time was spent doing those kinds of things. So yes, it, it takes a while. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of times where we got to get ourselves back to, back to here to, to, to settle in ground zero other than the, the, the recruiting weekends. So for those two and a half weeks, I, I don't think we s slowed down or stopped, but it, it's a part of it, you know, and, and we knew that that's what we had to do in order to have a day like this. Recruiting is still, it, there's no difference, I would say. I mean, kids, 18 to 17, 18, 19 year old kids are the same. Their families are the same. They have the same expect. Every kid you walk in their home has the same expectation. You know, they want the same things that the, that the kids maybe that you recruited in the past. They have those dreams and goals. And those are the kids we wanted. And that's what we said. 
We walked in there, I said, I don't want any different mentality from a kid that's being recruited by, by somebody else. I want the same mentality. We're looking for the same kid. They want the same things. They want a relationship. They want to know they're going to be cared for, loved for, as well as pushed, and given an opportunity to play at the highest level. So I don't think that's any different. Sometimes, to me, people on the outside think that's a different mindset. Well, you're recruiting a five-star there, and you're recruiting a four-star here. They're still 17, 18-year-olds. They okay. still... The, the easiest thing about being at a place, Alabama or Ohio State, one of those, is when you walk in the door, the door opens pretty easily. The other thing, the other ones is sometimes you've got to work at it a lot more. But the reality is you've still got to build a relationship. And believe me, if you asked, if you dove in it, there, there's a few doors that they said, no, nah, we're good, we're good. And about the third time you kept saying, we're coming, we're coming, now we're good. And about the fourth time, then all of a sudden the door opened. And sure enough, we got a couple of those kids that said no, 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 no. And then the fourth time they said, okay, come talk to us. You know? and, and you probably would not have had to do that. You probably would have had a smaller number. But when you dig that deep down inside, there's no difference. It's about building a relationship. It's about selling the dream and selling your vision and making sure that they have those same goals and dreams because those are the kids you want. Well, Torrent, Torrance is a great story. I mean, Torrance is a kid that uh, you know, was, was on the top of the world, was, was one of those guys that uh, was incredibly highly recruited, um, didn't have the opportunity maybe in, in the situation where he wanted to play a quarterback position. Um, so this is an oppor a new opportunity for him to come in and have, an oppor to, to have that chance to play a quarterback position that he loves and has dream always dreamed of playing. I think the unique thing about him is, like anybody, in life, you're going to get knocked down. It's about getting yourself back up. And a lot of these great athletes and a lot of these kids have always been the best. And the ability to get themselves knocked back down and find a way to pick themselves back up, to humble themselves and continue to move on, you have to do that in life. And eventually it's going to happen. It happened for him maybe a little bit earlier. It happened for him, you know, last year. So all of a sudden he's had a growing process. He's had to have the ability to be able to step back, realize what he had, okay, what he could possibly lose in a situation like that, and grow from it. And I think he, didn't, he, didn't play last year. he did not play last year. So I think that's the thing that I'm most excited about is to see. I like to see guys that have to fight through adversity because the game of football is all about adversity. What happened to him at Ohio State? I mean, again, a lot of guys can get lost in the shuffle. I think originally he got moved from quarterback to wide receiver. And just like I tell every kid we recruit, you know, there's a lot of guys on that list that say, that guy's a DB, that guy's a wide receiver. The reality is they might not think that. And I tell them, I want you to come in. I want you to play the position you think you're going to play best. Because wherever your heart and your mind are aligned, you got a chance to thrive. If your heart and your mind aren't aligned, okay, you're being pulled in two different directions, you can't be really successful at what it is that you do. So in order to be able to do that, and that's, what, that's the opportunity that, that Torrance will have, because he believes deep down in his heart and his mind that he wants to be a quarterback. Was he like, expelled from school? No, he, he didn't. He was, he was out of school this past semester. No, he had, he had an issue that he was, he was suspended for one semester and was back this next semester. What was the reception you got locally when you, you know, tried to recruit kids? And, uh, how did that people accept you? Well, it was great. I mean, there's even a lot of kids that we didn't end up getting. There's a lot of guys that we didn't even get, end up getting on a visit that still opened the doors, that were receptive to talking because of what Cincinnati means to them. And I mean so more maybe locally. So pretty much to a T, every single one of them opened the door. And it had a lot to do you know, may, maybe with the history of where you've been before. Um, it also had a lot to do with their high school coaches because the high school coaches deep down inside, whether I've recruited their school or not, know you from, from the last 15 to 20 years that you've been in the state of Ohio. So those kinds of things open the doors and give you the opportunity. They can, the high school coach calls a parent and says, hey, you ought to just at least talk to these guys because I know he's a good person. I've known him for 15 years. Um, give him an opportunity. And when they say that, you know, the door does open. So I think people always say that, well, you, you, know, you only had a, cert, a short amount of time to build some of those relationships. Really, it started probably 21 years ago or 15 years ago when I first started recruiting, whether I was at the University of Akron or, or at Ohio State. And you build those things, you do things the right way, and over time, you know, you build that reputation. How much of what you did in the short time you had here this year will help you in the future? That, that'll tell. I mean, again, what it does, initially is it creates some energy. And I don't just mean that energy is inside the program right now. I mean energy outside the program. And I think that's one of those things that we want to continue to do. 
is to con continue to, to generate that energy outside the program, to put ourselves out there, to make sure that these, everybody knows that this is really important to us. We know we're going to work in here. We know these guys are going to buy in and believe into what we're doing. The process is in place. Now we just got to make sure we can get more and more people involved in it. Will these guys come in and initially help us to start with? I don't know. I, I'm, we'll see. The reality is I hope these guys in these first two, three rows are, are really good. And, and maybe we don't need as many of them. Maybe they can come in and contribute in some different ways. But the reality is they're going to come in with that mindset that they are going to be able to contribute. And we're going to give everybody an opportunity. How much of you is, is a natural born salesman? Well, when you, when you really love what it is you do, and people always ask, because when I first got into coaching, someone said, wow, you really want to recruit or do you want to go try the NFL where you don't have to do that and sell? Well, it's not selling if it's what you believe in. So. I don't look at it as that. Some people say, well, when you do recruiting, it's like a used car salesman. Well, I don't, do you really believe in the car that you're selling? I believe in what it is that we're doing. I believe in what it is that we're selling and what do we have to offer. So it's not hard. It's not hard. And, and, but you have to deep down inside understand that and believe that. Where I was in the past, where I was at the University of Akron, I loved and believed in what I was doing there. You know, I was trying to figure out what it what exactly was I was selling because I was brand new at it. Um, when I was at Ohio State, it wasn't this hard because I had known it. I had played there. As I come here, obviously building your own program, knowing exactly what it is that you're selling, I think it's more so even for the assistant coaches to say, hey, what do I believe in? What is this really selling? What is the vision? Okay, and do they really believe in it? For the head coach, I don't think it's as difficult. Jarrell White is the highest ranked, local, highest rated local recruit, I believe, and came from a three-time state championship program. Did you look at that when you got him as kind of a statement to local, local kids that you could get a guy like this? Yeah, I mean, uh, Jarrell has, has got to be one of the catalysts, and I've said this to him several times, one of the catalysts to this, to this class, you know, and just building some of that momentum. These guys are all on social media. These guys all have connections. That's probably the biggest, toughest thing that you had to do when coming in late was not only building our relationship, but was trying to get in the midst of the relationships that those kids have already built with the commits where they ever were birthed where they were before, or the people that were recruiting them before, because those guys all know each other. To have Jarrell and his ability to, you know, to be a name, to be a guy that's very social, to be a guy that's out there to say, hey, I believe in this, I believe in my city, I believe in my community, and I believe in the university and the coaches, it, it meant a lot. And I'm, you might not have seen it unless you followed the social media, but I can tell you to a T, a lot of these kids knew him, believed in him, and, and he was a, a big part of what we had to do. How much in that opening weekend was a statement That's another one. I mean, he's got a history. We needed him more so than just for the, for the publicity. Uh, I know it looks better, and, and he's maybe the highest rated guy, and, and we have high expectations for him. But I think it's another one of those things. that All these guys follow it. You know, every one of these kids follow it. And they know that we've told them, you know, we're going to win. We're not coming here not to be successful. And guys want to see other people that believe that. So whether it was RJ or, or Jarrell or any of those guys that jumped in early in the process, that built momentum for other guys. And I think guys felt that. To have those guys come back by on other recruiting weekends showed those other people that were coming in here, wow, this, they, they, this is something special. You're the highest rated recruiting class in the league. I don't know how much stock you put in this thing, but is that a big deal for you? Is that something? If they're going to keep score, we want to win. So whatever it is they keep scoring, we're, our objective is to win. And we're going to continue to raise the bar. So yes, it does matter. Does it really tell you what, what they're going to be like in a year and a half? No, that's on us now. That's on the development process, both in the heart and the mind, and then to be able to put it onto the field. But in anything that they do that they keep track and they keep score, our objective is to win.